Thank you. G'day everybody, this is Stephen from Thailand Unplugged. Hope you're all well. I'm with Mao at the moment. We're in Vincent in Laos. You heard it correct, me and Mao in Laos. This is our second night in Vincent. We moved to the Mali Nambu Boutique Hotel and have a look around the area at night time. Very nice, really good entertainment. The next morning we get a taxi to the Thai Consulate General to pick up my visa that I submitted the day before. Then we get another taxi and head for the Thai Lao Friendship Bridge and have a problem. Mao has lost her passport. Let's see how that all unfolds. Mali Napu Hotel in Vincent Lao. The restaurant in the middle of the courtyard is very good, really well done up. It's where you get your breakfast in the morning. Um, they also have normal Thai food there and other things. And the courtyard itself is fantastic. It's, it, the, the, the hotel is built around the courtyard. You can sit out there and it's uh, absolutely beautiful. And uh, being in the centre, there's no noise at all from the traffic or anything. You can't hear a thing. It's very, very peaceful. They have a swimming pool as well. That's on top of the restaurant, actually. You don't want that falling on your head. The room we got was fairly small, but what do you want for the price? And the bed was uh, really hard, so that's the only thing I can complain about with the hotel. Sun's just going down now. Doesn't it look nice in the courtyard? Yeah. Oh, it's just on night time. That's the restaurant there in the middle of the courtyard. It looks really good. Check it out later. Well, it looks good. The uh, stairs there lead up to the uh, swimming pool. Have a look at this. It's really nice. Sit out here and have a few sippers. Yeah, sit out with a local drop, Lao beer. Yeah, very nice hotel, I thought. We like it here. Very good. Let's go for a walk now. Nampur Fountain. We came here during the day, actually. It wasn't real exciting, and but now look at it. Well, very nice. This is just up the road from the um, hotel we're staying at. Oh, it wouldn't even be 50 metres away. Fantastic. Looks really good at night. Yeah, there's all restaurants right around this place. It's a pretty big, uh, well, circular square, whatever you want to call it. Look at that, fantastic. Might sit down and have a beer or two. Look at this girl there singing and the guy. It's not too bad here. There's Mal. How you going, Mal? Ah. Yeah, they make homebrew over there. I, I'm ordering um, beer Lao. It's a great drop. One of the best beers in Asia, I think. Pretty nice. Here at night time, this transforms into one hell of a great spot. The We've got uh, the football on tonight, the World Cup or something. Yeah, I'm not really into this type of football, but uh, yeah, it's great if you're here, you want to watch the football. There's restaurants and bars all the way along this um, fountain, all the way around this fountain, sorry. This is across the road from our hotel, it's a French restaurant. And this one's a steakhouse apparently. The guy I met in the hotel uh, comes here all the time, he reckons it's really good. Oh. oh, pretty good. This is their breakfast, uh, it's included in the deal for the hotel. Uh, special fried, that's actually nicer, right? Uh, it's a joke, I think. Orange, if you like to call it that. And that is absolutely delicious. Nothing like spaghetti bolognese for breakfast. The coffee there, which doesn't really work too well, but you have a beer for breakfast, eh? <coughs> Smells eating all the food. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, I've come from Bangkok to Vincent. 
to uh, get my visa fixed up. You know, the travel up here costs, um, at a minimum, to catch a train, and do it on a cheap or a pass, the minimum spend is about 6,000 baht counting your visa and returning back to Bangkok. Now this is the thing that, that totally amazes me. Why do we have to do that? Uh, Thailand is just bleeding money because of this. I, I, I just can't see the sense of it. I can't see the sense of it at all. I wish someone would look into it in, in, in Thailand. One of the officials. Yeah. You know, I think they're charged 2000 for a visa. How about charging 3000 the money up and having an apartment actually in Thailand so the money actually does stay in Thailand instead of you know tourists going and want to stay a few days extra uh, happen to travel to Laos or whatever and that money is money that would have been spent in Thailand every time someone crosses their border Thailand loses three four thousand baht you know they gain it at the embassy but they could have done all this in Thailand something to think about it's just it doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. Just waiting for your number to be called. Yeah. And you pick up your, your, your passport and your visa there and you pay about 2,000, whatever you're going to pay, 3,000, 4,000, whatever it is. And that's it. It's pretty easy. Yeah, they get through it pretty fast. 10 minutes have done 30 of them. On number 98 or something. So I'll really get out of here about 2, I guess. And go and play with the um, tuk tuk drivers. So we'll all be heading for the border now, and the tuk tuks all want millions. Getting a little bus back to the uh, border from the Thai embassy. That little bus is out the front waiting for you. Yeah, they fill up the bus and then they take off. Wow, they've got big dogs in Lao. Just at the border now, Frigid Bridge, and Mel's lost her passport. Oh, it's going to be exciting now. The hotel where we stayed at last, they um, got a um, passport and made a copy of it. I don't think they gave it back, I'm not sure. So it's been a fun little trip. No, it's not his life. Okay, um, what happened was, um, Mel gave her passport, um, to check into the hotel in Lao, and the guy didn't give it back, okay? So, we had the, um, Lao Friendship Bridge, and Mel didn't have the passport. So, she rang the hotel, we had to go and buy a SIM card, of course. And the hotel said, hey, let them buy five minutes, I'll bring you back. Never run back. So, run again, and she, nice and casual, said, oh, we've got the uh, photo stack copy, that's all we have. And Mel said, no, you've got my passport, you didn't give it back. And it was, oh, yes, we just found it. Okay, she wants to send it by taxi to the border, okay? It's about a 15, 20 minute drive. So you have to pay the taxi. And Mel went off in the face and said, you, you lost my pa you kept my passport and didn't give it back and I've got to pay for the taxi. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Unbelievable. So we're just waiting here and um, waiting for the passport to arrive and then we go through to Thailand. Unbelievable. So I, it happened to me once before in um, Melbourne. I went to the, uh, the airport and, and I was playing with the uh, passport left it on the kitchen table. Oh wow. So, you know, when you get into taxis or cars or whatever, get your passport, take it out, make sure you eyeball your passport and then put it away before you get into a taxi. Or however you go. Nong 
Mackay Resort at the moment. Not too bad. Yeah, got a bit of free breakfast. It's about a thousand baht a night. Depends you, I suppose. Rooms are good. Here's the breakfast. Sausages and eggs. Staff's pretty good. It's a nice place. The price. Rooms are good. Nongkai. It's the Nongkai Resort. That's it. You know, we drove there and um, it's a hell of a long trip, it's nine hours. And the, the trouble with the Jensen is, you know, it's a wonderful city. It's the tuk-tuk drivers, they're, they're just horrible. You know, they're, uh, you know, you want to go in the corner, they want to charge you 300 baht, 300 baht, 300 baht. I mean, you know, uh, they're doing trips that you get charged 30, 40, 50 baht in Bangkok and they want 300. And, you know, and uh, if you don't give it to them, yeah, they'll, they'll say a hundred, you get on the back and they put their foot down and throw you all over the back of the uh, tuk-tuk, slam on their brakes and blah, blah, and uh, we had the experience of going to the hotel that was listed uh, from a goda. So, yeah, I'll take it for 100. So he took us there and uh, they'd shift it, right? So we're in the middle of nowhere and... Um, the tuk tuk driver says, uh, Oh, you want me to take you somewhere else? 300. He knew he had us, and uh, we told him to go where to get, and he got out of his tuk tuk, and you know, he quite calmly drove off. So that was his payback for us for not giving him his extortion money of 300 baht. They're absolutely horrible. Uh, Jensen um, Lao should do something about them. Uh, <laughs> tell ya. Really, really horrible. I mean, you know, you come out of your hotel and you know, you get pestered by them. It's like uh, Bangkok used to be in the old days, you know. Probably worse. I think they calmed down in Bangkok now, the tuk tuk drivers. Uh, the government did something about them. But wow, they're, 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 they're absolutely horrible. I mean, you go to the, um, the big arch there, the memorial, war memorial. Okay, you can get there for, I think we got there for 50, 100 baht. Yeah, to get back, 300. Because there's. They just dick. Oh. It's unbelievable. That, that, you know, you give me 300 baht or else. Well, we ended up walking. You know, I, I, I can afford it, but I'm not giving it to them. So you're stuck somewhere and they want extortion money. Then you got the guys running around with the cameras. Um, there must be a hundred of them, you know, trying to take your photo and digital photo and print it out for you. Now, two, two Chinese girls were there, right? where they take the photos, and they stood up on top of the, um, the platform, they're not doing any harm, I mean, you know, and they're uh, taking photos, and one of the cameramen got very upset that they were sort of not using his camera and uh, using their own camera and taking away his spot. It, it, it's uh, absolutely crazy. Yeah. That's the way it is in Jensen. I mean, money's hard, you know. Oh well, never mind, I mean back in Thailand now. Sometimes you get really, you know, really annoyed with these tuk-tuk drivers, they, they really sort of start to piss you off. Oh well, such is life. I want to give you all a huge thanks for watching. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and a like. And click on the bell notification for any new videos we release. And I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below. I'll do my very best to answer each and every one. There are links for Patreon and PayPal if you would like to support us in making videos. Any help would be most appreciated. Until we meet again, have a good one. Thanks for watching.